Hi everyone, welcome. As you might have seen right there on the label, these are the worms that I enlisted from my compost barrel. The compost barrel is just my outdoor system where everything goes pretty much. And it needed repair, so to be able to fix the container, I emptied it. And all the worms that were living in the container were spread out into a number of different grow bags. To let that material dry off a little bit, it was awfully soggy. And during that time, the worms foraged for a while. And then eventually I took the material out of those grow bags and I launched that system over there. So that system was launched 286 days ago. And if I were to wait one more day, 287 days would make it 41 weeks of age. So it's up there. Last time we checked in here, 13 days ago, it was receiving its 22nd feeding. And what I've got here for them is going to become its 23rd. The 23rd feeding for this system the 22nd feeding, that last feeding was kind of cool because we went in there with some cantaloupe and some coffee, but when we were digging around through the leftovers, we bumped into this pretty interesting little worm party that was going on. They were feasting on some pear, a pear that had been cut in half, and they were just all over that stuff. And there were leftovers of that pear, and on top of that, they got cantaloupe. And I'm thinking, you know, 13 days later, we might be getting back in here soon enough to see a nice little worm party. So I'm going to put on a glove. We're going to get that system up on the bench, and we're going to get them fed. So now there's not a lot of rhyme or reason for it, but some of my systems, I sort of buddy them up where two bins get fed and maintained simultaneously with one another. Here, this system, for whatever reason, has just been managed on its own. So, so it's only one system that's going to be fed. The food that I've got for them here is this assortment of, well, what the packaging says, coleslaw. So at the bottom is going to be some of that coleslaw, which is basically cabbage some other stuff mixed in as well as on top here a whole bunch of carrot peels and underneath the veggies I have some pieces of paper including multiple days worth of coffee filters as well as the coffee from today so let's uh, let's see how they're doing in here it would be kind of fun to see another interesting worm party like we saw last time when they were all huddled around the leftovers of the uh, the pear and I'm thinking that maybe even the cantaloupe they got last time might even have the potential to create a similar turnout you can see there's a number of worms that have sort of <laughs> snuck in between the little bubbles on this plastic. So I think if we just sort of fold it in half, maybe it'll keep the worms from freaking out. Or, you know what? What we could do is actually rest this piece of paper that's over here on top of that. And then, uh, then we can keep the worms over there on the plastic on, in some shade so they can remain comfortable. So now, this coffee filter here is sort of indicating to us where the position of the last feeding was. I wonder how they're doing in terms of working down the coffee filter itself. Usually the coffee filter that's there to indicate where we last fed is sort of right in the um, line of fire for the worms kind of zipping around and nibbling on it in the progress of passing by it. So let's... Uh, just scrub things aside a little bit. All this little debris that sort of sits around the edges where there's just a little bit of airflow around the plastic coverings. Stuff just sits there getting a little bit neglected. I always feel like I want to do what I can to get that stuff back into action. So maybe we'll include it down in the feeding area after we apply their food today. Yeah, all these bits of bedding and whatnot, all these dry materials sitting on the surface, all stuff that could do a lot better if it had a little bit more moisture. And usually right down the feeding zone is where you're going to find a good bit of moisture, depending on what you fed last time. So I think what we're seeing here, yeah, that's, um, this on top might have just been a piece of paper of some sort, some sort of bedding materials tossed in there. But right beneath that, I'm already starting to see signs of one of the pieces of cantaloupe melon that was placed in here for them. This piece must have been placed with the juicy part down and the the rind sticking up man look at that <laughs> you can't even tell that there was ever any melon on this piece of rind it was just totally skimmed off of it i think there's another similar piece over here i wonder if that looks the same if we're able to pull it out oh wow you know what it just seems like the material right below that thing is where i felt a whole bunch of worms right when my fingers were sort of penetrated the material they were just everywhere. <laughs> I guess this would be that that other piece of cantaloupe 
groin that I was heading for, and that I felt all the worm action beneath. So chances are it's just more of the same if we keep probing beneath the feeding area. Because the leftovers of the pear that was in here last time when we first walked in on the big worm party going on, I don't know, I, I seriously doubt there'd be any of that left over after yet another almost two weeks. Because that pear had gotten two weeks of activity. And then we put it back in as leftovers last time. And it's been 13 days more. So if we were to bump into any leftovers of the pear, it would be a little bit surprising. The leftovers of the cantaloupe, at least the rind, is not very surprising. Because that rind's a little bit tougher. The worms will break that down too over time. But perhaps not in two weeks. That just might not be enough. Or maybe if there were more worms, it might be possible. But even as, as I touch this stuff, I could feel it's got like little hard bits to it. And that just might need a little more time to soften up so the worms can bite into it. Okay. Gosh, we've only explored about half of this feeding zone. We've still got the section of, of it right over here by me too. So let's not prolong it. Let's just see what else is happening down in here and then we can get to the business of giving them some food. All right. Similar. This is probably paper. This, could it be the skin of a pear? It certainly doesn't look like melon rind, like cantaloupe rind. Perhaps we did bump into some leftovers of the pear, but it certainly isn't much, that's for sure. <laughs> and every piece of cantaloupe has no melon remaining on it. They just ate every last bit of it off the rind. And that's not too surprising either. So it looks like we were coming back in here in a pretty timely um, interval to give them their next feeding. While there are leftovers, these are leftovers which I treat as, at this point at least, as long-term items. All this material here, which was very fast for them to nibble all the, the soft, fruity material off of, is probably going to take a little while longer before they could break it down. And they'll do it as best as they can, but I see no harm in putting right alongside of it a little bit of food that they can really continue gobbling up. It's like all that cabbage and all of that carrot. And while that doesn't sound like as glamorous a, a, fee, a feeding as a pear or a cantaloupe melon, I have a feeling the worms are going to take to that just as, just as much as they've taken to the fruits that they've been getting lately. Here's the stem of a banana. Wow, it's so beaten up. <laughs> The worms just rip it to shreds. Okay, man, look at all these beautiful castings. I just keep bumping into little bits of leftover stuff here and there, you know? That banana, the banana stem, I don't even know how far back you have to go to get to banana. When the banana was last fed, but uh, that sort of thing also usually takes a little bit of time, perhaps because it's so fibrous. The, uh, the stem of the banana is usually a, a slower composting item, too. So let's get these little guys fed. tell you, if I gave them even more time, they would probably just keep backfilling this hole until the hole didn't even exist here anymore. Come on, guys. I made the hole to put food into for you guys. You should be glad. <laughs> just interesting, like as they squirmed around over here, they unearthed a couple banana stems too, which I didn't see earlier. So that was kind of interesting. So just one more quick little excavation of the stuff that they just managed to dump back into the hole for me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so I think we are going to need a good bit of room because I've got not only the stuff I showed you earlier, all those yummy foods, but I've got some paper towels. And my guess is just from the look of it, some wine must have gotten spilled <laughs> and needed to get cleaned up because that just sort of has that red wine color to it, if you will. All right, so I've got a good bit of veggie material over there as well as some coffee. So maybe these other ones will come back in in a moment. But I think it's time to start sprinkling in the food. 
This is a good bit. I think we could probably go with only about half of it and then come in with another layer of... Oops. Oh. <laughs> come in with another layer of paper on top of that for them. All kinds of yummy stuff in here. Mainly carrots. White carrots and orange carrots. And I guess the stuff at the bottom of that bag, once we empty that, it'll be um, mainly cabbage and some carrots. So here's another paper towel. Fairly soiled one. I guess it's kind of nice having these around to be able to just quickly clean off your glove in the process of laying in the bedding material. So, geez, we have so much more here. Feels like I could build another layer if I wanted to. And Well, you know, I probably could because we've still got the coffee, right? And, you know what, since we've got coffee filters here as well, plus a fairly beaten up top covering object, an old coffee filter that was feeding zone indicator, we'll turn that into bedding here too. So we've got another pretty good layer of paper here on top into which we can drop all this yummy coffee. And that to me is starting to look like a pretty good generous size feeding. But we've still got the remainder of the veggie to throw in here. And we could use this to mark where we last fed. We've got a replacement feeding zone indicator now. Oh, we've got all these leftovers too. Let's not forget to return all this stuff into the feeding zone. Yeah, wow. This is going to be a nice generous feeding. They're going to enjoy this, that's for sure. And I guess this stuff here is just that dry material that we collected in the beginning too. This stuff I just like to see get it right down to where the action is going to be. Get it right back into service after sort of being idle by being dry. And, well, what's left in here? Luckily the majority of it fell out earlier in a big clump. But we're going to give them everything. This is what I came down here with for them. And I think they deserve it. So we'll let them have it. Every time we go through here, it does seem like it's a fairly busy bin. Lots and lots of hungry mouths to feed, so shouldn't be bashful about giving them a nice, hearty, generous portion. All right, and since we got all that nice, yummy vegetable matter right there, this is just another supplementary piece of bedding that they'll probably pretty much do away with since it's all laid right up against the feeding. So before we close up shop here, I still want to do something I've been kind of building in as a standard practice, which is just to see how the outer edges of the system are doing. Usually not quite as damp as the feeding area where all the moisture comes in with the foods. Since the foods are frozen and they thaw out, very often they um, emit a good bit of moisture in the process of just being in the bin for the first few minutes and thawing out. Right away there's a whole bunch of nice melt showing up in the worm bin. So, we managed to cover up the feeding zone for the most part. Hopefully we've got enough stuff with which we can f cover it all up. I think once we sort of till up this side as well and aerate it all, we should be able to cover up pretty thoroughly over the feeding area. I guess I could probably even leave it mounded up a little bit if I wanted to. I'm sure even if I do, it'll probably be all submerged and sunken in by the next time we come in here because of all the... Um, food being consumed, food and bedding all being consumed. So if we were to leave it mounted up like so, that wouldn't even be so bad. I usually don't. I usually go for a level top surface for whatever reason, but I'm also not uh, opposed to once in a while changing things up just for the heck of it. <laughs> Throw myself a curve so that the next time I come in here, I'll be like, what the heck was I thinking? Why did I do that? Here's another banana stem. It's amazing to see how they work it down, right? over time so nice job I knew it would be fun checking in on these guys it always is I don't even remember what the uh, estimated worm population in here was something in the neighborhood of maybe 1800 worms if I remember correctly that's an estimate that I usually compile with the input of all the viewers based on our joint observations of the worms being placed into the system and that was quite some time ago so perhaps it's not quite that same number anymore. Maybe it's more. Maybe they've been reproducing. I'd like to think they were. Jeez, I got a bunch of worms. <laughs> Look like they crawled off the plastic. Unfortunate little guys. They're just lucky I'm here to see them and save them. Let me make sure I don't have any other ones that I've got to save. All right, I think we've got them all. Careless little wormies end up in a dry place and they could end up regretting it. <laughs> we don't want to see that happening. All right, everyone. 
that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.